guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you guys a worth the buy or not nah review on the brand new Subculture Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. Now it's time for me to open my little palette and see what's in here and really, really tear it apart. And I also really quickly want to say that I feel like these past two years, I've noticed that here on YouTube, and even like Instagram and Twitter, whenever, even if it's just one person says that it's a terrible product, everybody starts saying it's a terrible product. Instead of waiting and trying it out and really creating their own opinion as opposed to just going with it with a negative mindset. And that's why I was watching reviews that were positive, reviews that were in the middle, and reviews that were negative because I wanted to see what everybody was thinking and then I could build my own opinion. I didn't want to get my palette and go into it thinking this is gonna be a shit show and just like mean whatever about it no because that's just not who i am i really like to listen to everything every piece of the information and then build my thoughts I feel like it's all about bashing and being negative and i feel like it's all about that clickbait and all about that like let's see like if me bashing this brand or saying like some crazy stuff about it is going to get me more views i feel like it's all about the numbers lately but there's nothing more genuine to me as somebody who subscribes to a lot of channels and watches a lot of YouTube is authenticity. It was just really unfair for me to see those select few YouTubers that are very well known that talked about this palette and said very, very good things about it. And then you start seeing the comments, everybody's like, oh, you're a sellout. Oh, you're just getting it for free, blah, blah, blah. Like, why can't they just like it because they like it? Like, why can't they just like it because it's a great product? And I feel like a lot of YouTubers who are well established know that they built their whole subscriber count with loyalty and I feel like they wouldn't go against that. Now, I can't speak for every YouTuber because I personally don't know, but that's just what I think. So I just want to quickly say that before I jump and give you guys my thoughts because I feel like things have gone so out of control with this palette that it's just like too much. I'm just going to quickly give you guys some background. So if you guys follow Anastasia Beverly Hills, they've been doing these palettes for years. I have all the Anastasia palettes. I think they're phenomenal. So I'm just really excited that they came out with this guy. So as you guys all know, this palette right here, this is the Modern Renaissance Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. And this palette is probably the most popular Anastasia Beverly Hills palette to date. Um, I think it may be titled the Mario palette. That was a very fantastic palette that was so versatile, so beautiful, done so right. Um, but I think this one may top it a little bit. I know it was probably the most sought out palette on Sephora and I'm sure in Ulta and other places. This was just like everybody's dream and more. So when they created this palette and they saw what a success it was and how well it did with the customers that's when they started to think about a little sibling to the modern renaissance palette and then this summer they decided to launch the subculture palette i know that claudia or as maybe some of you guys know her norvina who is anastasia's daughter she is a very very big part of the brand i want to say she's the creative director almost want to consider her an owner because her mom owns it, but I'm pretty sure she's the creative director of the whole Anastasia situation. She is very involved and I have been following her for years on Twitter, on Instagram, and her passion to the makeup industry and just makeup in general and the ingredients and really creating the product is totally there. I feel like she's completely authentic to what she does and she really, really loves what she does. And I think that's so important when anybody has a company, a business, I feel like it's so important to show how passionate you are about it and to obviously love what you're doing because if you don't love what you're doing and you're just doing it because of the money, it's gonna show, it's gonna reflect on the products. I also wanna talk about the fact that this palette is really different. Like there's 14 shades in here and I really appreciate that they didn't go for like another warm palette they didn't try to go for that situation they just went a completely different direction and i really respect that because i honestly love my warm colors but i've seen so many warm palettes that i'm just like another warm palette oh no so i just was so happy that this was going in a different direction you still have the warm colors but you do have a nice nice variety of your cool tone colors 
which are this like beautiful color right here which is like a nice gray which is called mercury then you have axis which is a beautiful blue uh, i would consider this one rowdy a uh, nice like dark dark purple as more of a cool tone color i wouldn't consider it like something like warm so i do think that that's really nice and then you have this nice warm selection here that you can use to warm up your creases to really create some dimension in those crease folds so that it really makes your eyes pop and i think that's so nice that they include everything now there's 11 matte shades in this palette then you have three metallic shades you have cube which is a dual chrome shadow and it looks white in the pan but when you put it on i actually have it in my inner tear duct it reflects pink like a pop of pink i wish this wasn't in there i wish it was just like a nice like shimmery like white so that i could use for my uh brow bone highlight because i did have to reach for another palette to get that nice like white brow bone highlight color because this was way too pink to go up there so i just feel like this is kind of like the odd man out and the next one is electric and electric is this gorgeous like gold green color i'm actually wearing it on my lids you guys are going to see a demo of me doing my eyeshadow and that color is stunning. It's so beautiful. Definitely, you really have to go in with your brush with that one because it does have some like glitter reflexes. So you wanna make sure that you pick up enough to where you really pack on the product. When I first used this color, I wasn't seeing any payoff, but I was going in lightly with my brush because I noticed the other ones were so pigmented that I was like, okay, let me just go in lightly and no like you need to make sure that if you use this color electric you really go in with a heavy hand when you're picking up the color with your brush because if not you're not really going to see much color payoff and then there's this other nice metallic shade which is adorn it's a gorgeous like bronze gold shimmery shade and that is like my cup of tea during the fall time like if i can have this color on my lid all the time that would be fantastic and i feel like this color flatters every single color in the spectrum like i just feel like you can never go wrong with this color it looks beautiful on everybody so now i want to go into the matte shades now i'm not going to go hit every single color i feel like the colors in here speak well for themselves they're great colors uh, but i do have to say going off the whole drama going on with this palette and why people hate it and why people just are so turned off by it is the fallout. So this is what I'm gonna quickly say. I personally feel like there is fallout, definitely. When you tap your brush, there's gonna be fallout. If you have a heavier hand, there's gonna be a lot of fallout. If you're light-handed with this, there won't be that much fallout, but no matter if you use a heavy hand or a light hand, for me with my experience, as you guys will be seeing right here, very, very pigmented eyeshadows. They blend so well. You guys will also see that here. With my crease color, I used the shade Roxy, and it blended like a complete dream. I had no issues blending that out. It looks phenomenal, and the reason I chose to do this look right here is because we're still in the summertime, so I wanted to save my darker colors for when it's going to be fall time because I definitely want to do some nice fall eye tutorials for you guys because these colors are freaking beautiful and I love the fall time but I wanted to keep things still summery still summer we're still in August let's not take away from summertime so I did this more summer appropriate eye but as for pigmentation and blendability I think it's phenomenal when I got this palette because I had already heard different reviews good and bad I was like you know what let me sit down I don't usually touch the palette until I get on camera and really get to play around with it but I was like, you know what, I've heard so many things. Let's just go ahead and touch it and see for ourselves how this palette is going to do. And I started swatching all the darker colors because those are always the ones that are harder to blend and also the ones that may not be as pigmented as the lighter shades. And let me just tell you, the colors swatched beautifully. Like one swipe, bam. Two swipes, bam. They just swipe beautifully and you guys will be seeing those swatches so that you guys can see it for yourselves on my skin complexion. They also launched their glow, like, liquid highlighters, like the, the lotion-looking ones. They launched those, and then their lipsticks. Now, I feel like with those, I'm like, let me try those in store, because I'm very selective with 
my highlighters and honestly I'm not a big fan of Anastasia Beverly Hills highlighters they don't really do much for me they, they don't give me that glow that I like so I just I was like let me swatch the new highlighters in store and then lipsticks I'm very very picky when it comes to a lipstick consistency if it's too matte it's not for me I hate when it's like getting crusty on my lips and just looking like a hot mess I can't handle that so I was like you know what let me just wait until it's in store and I can look at all the colors swatch them see how they look on my skin tone and then I can go forward with those products so I did not purchase anything except for the subculture palette because I knew that mama was gonna want this the experience wasn't the best online I hope that they continue doing the just like surprise releases where nobody knows if they are going to be launched at what time. I feel like those are the most successful releases because when everybody knows the launch date, things just go crazy. So now, is it worth the buy or not? So you guys are probably wondering that question the most. So here's what I have to say about that. I feel like if you're very on the fence and you've seen so many reviews on this palette and it's made you even more confused and you just don't know, I would totally tell you, you know what, wait until August 15th go to Sephora, go to Ulta, swatch it for yourself, play around with it if you need to, just take a little brush, I'm sure they have like some brushes there that you can use, and then just kind of like swatch it on your hand and see if it's too much fallout for you, if it's gonna be too much of a hassle, don't get it, it's not worth it for you. But if you like what you see, and you really like the blendability, and you really like the pigmentation, then go ahead and purchase it. I think that's how we should go about this product because I feel like there's so many thoughts and so many people just like bashing people that like it, bashing people that hate it, and at the end of the day, we all have different opinions. Not everybody likes pizza, not everybody likes Mexican food, not everybody likes to go swimming. Like, we all have different preferences and we just have to accept that, but for me, personally, for myself, I do think this palette is worth it. I love the color selection, I love what they did with it, I feel like they're so pigmented, they're such nice shadows, and this look right now is giving me mad life, I can't wait to slay everybody's life when I leave this room. So those are my thoughts, um, and I also really quickly want to say, it sucks that they had such a, they had a really good turnout when it came to sales on the day that this launched like apparently this is like their top seller like on launch day which was freaking awesome for them but then all the backlash they got like I just feel like they didn't deserve that I think Anastasia Beverly Hills is a really really good brand who cares so much about the artistry and so much about their products I know they had no ill will I know they didn't have any bad intentions everybody makes mistakes everybody has some bad situations in their life if you don't like this palette guess what they're offering you a full refund and you can get your money back and use that money for something that you will love so that's how I see it it'd be different if they were being weird about it if they weren't giving you answers I've seen Claudia aka Norvina um, on her Twitter account I've been reading everything she's saying she's been responding to everybody she you can tell she's been really concerned and she wants to make sure she resolves this issue I know these were softly pressed. They weren't pressed as hard as some of these shadows in here. These had fallout too though, so I mean, I don't know, like these, these both have fallout. I feel like a lot of eyeshadow palettes that I have have fallout. I know some of my Cavill and these have so much fallout. Like I'll be doing like a colorful eye look and I'll be like, oh my God, there's like oh, this eyeshadow on my lap. So I feel like we all make mistakes. We can't just sit here and bash somebody completely and just tear them apart. I feel like Everybody makes mistakes in the world and we should just forgive and move on. And if you're getting your full refund back, that's all that matters. I mean, at the end of the day, if they weren't giving you a full refund or they were just ignoring us and just not paying attention and not trying to fix the problem, then I would be like, okay, that's shady. But I don't think there's anything shady going on and I think that this palette was a hit for me at least. So those are my thoughts and I really hope that you guys appreciated this review. I just wanted to be completely honest with my feelings and really share with you guys my personal thoughts and my personal experience with this palette because it's been a very good experience and I will make sure that I do some looks. My first fall look will probably be with this palette so I'm super excited to do a fall look very soon. Probably not until like two or three weeks from now because I feel like right now we're still like in this heat wave but I will be coming out with a fall eye tutorial very soon for you guys so that you guys can see that right away and that being said I will be seeing you guys very very soon for a new video bye guys